Writing Out Loud. A program designed to explore in-depth interviews with writers to hear that words have voices. Hello everyone, I'm Teresa Miller and welcome to Writing Out Loud. My very special guests today are best-selling author P.C. Cast and her friend, historian, chief of the Wallace clan, Shoris Wallace. Thank you both for being here. Thanks, Teresa. Tulsa, Oklahoma, Scotland. What kind of literary geography is going on here? Well, it's a complex literary geography, I think. Yeah. Um, okay, give <laughs> us a little of that complexity. We're deep, we can get it. <laughs> well, um... This last summer, as you know, uh, my my publisher in the UK, Little Brown, um, brought Kristen and me in for a short tour um, in England, and um, and some of Scotland. Okay. But <laughs> but um, they well, I needed to do research in the Highlands for the book that I just turned in, mm-hmm. and uh, so they flew us into Edinburgh. And I said I'd like to stay there for a week and do research. And at first they said that they'd hire a car for me. A uh, little brown did. Mm-hmm. And I said that would be great. And then the next thing I heard, they said that they'd hire, um, if I would like them to, hire a historian for me to um, help me, well, to assist me in research in the Highlands. And um, I said that would be great too. And then they sent me the resume of this man who... Um, <clears throat> Chieftain of Clan Wallace, and he is <laughs> he um, helped Randall Wallace, assisted Randall Wallace in, in research for Braveheart, and um, fight directed on Braveheart and and a lot of different a lot of different films, Gladiator and that type of thing, and um, he's what showed up to to help me research in the. Introduce you to Scotland. Uh huh. You know, we ought to do a little updating because last time you were on the show, Tempted was just about to come out. Yes. And then suddenly, because you talk about your publisher in Great Britain and you've mm-hmm. got publishers in Germany and everywhere, I mean, this book has just exceeded everyone's expectations. Tell us yes. all the news, what's happening and what it's like. Well, we're um, <clears throat> the House of Knights in 39 countries now. Um, we have over, I think, over 10 million in print. Um, Tempted debuted number one in the U.S., in Canada, and um, in the U.K., and the seventh book, Burned, I've turned in, and it will be released in April on April 27th, and we're hoping that it exceeds Tempted. And what's it like getting responses from other countries? Do the, your fans in Germany react in the same way as, say, your fans in Great Britain, your fans in Canada, your fans here in, in Oklahoma? It's... Yeah, they they kind of do. They ask me, "Is Tulsa real?" A lot of, <laughs> oh, yeah, oh. because so much of the settings in Tulsa. They ask me if it's real, and and you know, is there really a Tulsa, and and uh, you know, is, are, is the stuff real? In and I said, no, it's not. It's completely fictionalized. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you're you're so bad. Charles, had you read any of the House of Night books before you met PC? Yes. Oh, you had? No. No? Okay, you were just being oh, good. I got you. You're yeah. honest in the end. You just couldn't keep up the, the no. facade. Yeah, okay. I've caught up a lot now. I bet so. And that's, no. the, you know, and you, you had gone to Scotland to do research. What is it about Scotland that makes it such good story material? Depth of history, I would reckon. It is depth of history and, and culture. And it's just, I love. Um, mythology anyway mm-hmm. and you know that I've done a lot with Greek mythology and also yes. um, well a Celtic heritage to that type of thing and um, it's just very interesting and there's there's a lot that I can pull in and weave into my stories and then change and make it in my own world yeah. when you're scouting out a country as an author mm-hmm. what sort of details are you looking for beyond just what you'd find in a travel guide oh man I like the inside details. I like mm-hmm. what the people are really like and how they feel about their culture too, how they feel about their history. And then I like to take that and shift it over to my world and use how they really feel and how they really view um, themselves through like my lens. Mm-hmm. It's, it's, it's kind of like taking a picture or, or, or painting someone's portrait. I want it to be real the way they look, but then it has to be through my eyes too. What are some of the most exciting discoveries you've made about Scotland, other than Charis? <laughs> I can't think of anything more exciting than that, actually. <laughs> yeah. But as a writer, things that you didn't know before, before you, you went to Scotland. 
that we may find showing up in some of your books? Oh, there's a... Um, I love the the history of of Clan Wallace, of that they're guardians of the Ace, guardians mm-hmm. of the of like the Queens of Scotland, and um, that I found that very interesting. And you'll see that woven into Burns a lot, the whole a warrior culture mm-hmm. that's also heavily matriarchal, and a kind of a clan outlook. And I liked taking that and turning it into part of my matriarchal world of the House of Night. Even though your books are fiction, isn't it important to get the details right? I mean, people could say you could just make up the stuff about the, the history and the clan, but why do you get into trouble with that? It's frightening to, it, it's scary to take someone's real history, take their real culture, and then fictionalize it. I always get afraid that I'm, I was afraid I'm going to mess up. But you can't mess up if it's my fictionalized world, but it's still, it's, it's, it's different when it's real people and it's real history. Um, Because, you know, you're always going to get people who are like, that's not the way it goes. And I'm telling you, if that happens, it's not his fault, it's mine. (laughs) Well, meeting Phyllis and then realizing how quickly that our instinct was right on top of the real deal. Mm -hmm. A lot was fiction and mythology, Mm -hmm. you know. Uh, Quite quickly, I I realized that I thought, this is really a good, good person here that's trying to understand something and still maintain it being fiction. So I thought I would introduce Phyllis to people that you wouldn't normally meet, mm-hmm. which are people who have legends handed down, if, if that's a word, legend, or the history is handed down from family to family. So many people's legends are actually our reality. Mm-hmm. You, that's you know, so good. and the fiction is still our reality. Mm-hmm. You know, we 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 got two laws. We live by the old law and the new law, and to introduce Phyllis to the people of the old law was really easy because they all recognised our spirit, they recognised our character. Mm-hmm. So then to talk about what personally affects them, you know, and the, da- the dynamics of the old law and the new law coming together sometimes don't work, mm-hmm. you know? And uh, Phyllis seemed to have a heartbeat on the old law. Mm-hmm. So for my people to and the Irish to speak to Phyllis, I think we were all quite... It was like somebody had stepped out hundreds of years ago and step back in carrying mm-hmm. the same instincts. So our freedom to talk about how these things still affect us today and how Phyllis was intending to weave them into a fictional story was a, an honour. It wasn't a mm-hmm. conflict. You know? oh. No, it's very nicely nicely put. I've never been to Scotland, Charis. If mm-hmm. I were to come, where's the first place you would take me to get to know Scotland? Hey, I think a shop to get you a weatherproof kit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, That's, yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Uh, and uh, I would listen to you first mm-hmm. as to why you were here, mm-hmm. and then I would decide where I